So Ralph Breaks the Internet becomes, I believe, the second ever movie to earn a Disney Classics badge while being a sequel. The first was The Rescuers Down Under, a movie that I loved, but I'm a little bit unsure about whether I want Disney to be going down the full cinematic sequel route. Because they're a studio that comes up with great ideas for their animated features, and to just give us sequels... It's been a problem with Pixar for a while. The sequels haven't been as good. I was worried about this one, and... Yeah, I've got some issues with it, but let's talk about it. Put the bunny back in the box. Starring the voice talents of, amongst others, John C. Riley, Sarah Silverman, Al Gadot, Jane Lynch, and Ed O'Neill, directed by Rich Moore and Phil Johnston off of a screenplay that Phil Johnston wrote alongside Pamela Ribbon. This is my review for Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2. So Wreck-It Ralph 2 picks up sometime after the first one. Ralph and Fenelope are best friends. They're BFFs, they hang about together all the time, they do everything together, and they enjoy each other's company, but... Their shenanigans get a little bit out of hand and it results in Vanellope's game being broken. The steering wheel's broken and the only way that they can save the game and save her world is to travel into the internet itself to try and find a replacement steering wheel. And part of what I loved about the first one was the fact that it was so based in the gaming world. There were so many little moments and little things to do with gaming that really put a smile on my face. Just little tiny things like the exclamation mark and the noise appearing for the Metal Gear Solid characters or Sonic, and Mario, all of these different characters coming into it was so much fun to see. And the movie itself was really strong in its own right too. I think Wreck-It Ralph is one of the better Disney movies from recent years. And to be fair, their classic movie is pretty consistently good lately, but this is one of the stronger ones. And yeah, I loved so much about that film, and I was concerned about this one because, well, it seemed like the Emoji movie, but in Disney I have a bit more faith than I do in the people behind the Emoji movie, but it does seem like they saw that movie and went, Back off, we'll take it from here with Disney, we'll do this right. And for the most part, they do. It doesn't lean quite as heavily into things as the Emoji Movie did. It doesn't seem cynical. The Emoji Movie's problem, well, one of many, it was a terrible film, but one of its problems was that it felt like just a giant advertisement. It, there was no soul or heart or anything to that movie at all. It just felt like they were having all of these products in there and they were getting a nice little paycheck for them and they just had to find a way to work them into the story. Wreck-It Ralph 2 does more than that. It feels like everything that's in this movie is meant to be here. It doesn't things. It doesn't feel like it's selling out at all. It feels like things like Amazon or Pinterest. Like lots of these different things are in the film, but they work. They work a lot more effectively, and they don't feel cheap. They don't feel like I'm watching an advert. It doesn't feel like I'm just watching somebody else's money being spent to get me to buy their product. It feels like it all fits narratively to the story, and that's a very important thing and something that I was worried about. And there's a lot of fun to be had with how they use these things. There's a lot of great in-jokes, little small, tiny little moments that really put a smile on my face, and some of this film is genuinely laugh-out-loud funny as well. Um, a large part of that is down to the performances. All of the voice cast here is great. John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman, the two of them just as good as they were in the first film, and Sarah Silverman arguably gets a bit more to do in this one. Uh, Ralph may be the titular character for this, but this feels a lot more like Vanellope's movie than it does Ralph's. Uh, that's not to say that Ralph's underserved, but after the first movie, that kind of felt like Ralph's story was done. So I like the fact that if Disney are going to be doing a lot more of these sequels, and Frozen 2 is on the way, one I'm not looking forward to, but it, it does make sense that they focus on other characters to be the lead in the film. Because yeah, Ralph's story was perfect for the first film, but here he works a lot more as a supporting character to Vanellope's story. And we may have moved away from the gaming world, but it doesn't mean there's not fun cameos in this. There's a ton. I'm going to need another watch, I think, to be able to spot them all. But there's so many great ones from Stormtroopers to Iron Man to Baby Groot. So many characters in here that I wasn't expecting to see from other parts of the Disney franchises. And yeah, it was fun. It was fun keeping an eye on them. And it was fun watching them interact with all these different characters in different ways. Uh, the Disney princesses don't get quite as much to do as I was hoping they would. Like what we saw in the trailer was about 50% of what they actually get to do in the film. But they're great fun. It's good seeing sort of the stereotypes of these princesses being turned on its head a little bit. And they do that very, very well. But it has to be said that, yeah, this one doesn't feel as cohesive or as strong as the first one by quite some way, actually. There's a lot of it I liked, and I've just did quite a lot of that. There's a lot of things that made me smile, but I wasn't as engaged with the story anywhere near as much as I was the first one. Because it does go to some unexpected places, and it doesn't go in the directions that I would have expected it to go. But it's hard to maintain that sort of story when they're tied into this internet theme that they have. It all has to kind of make sense and fit around the plot that they've constructed. And I don't think it was a strong enough concept. 
going into the internet, yeah, great, but being a kid's movie, there's only so many things that they can do. And it just feels like a very watered down version of what the internet actually is. And I'm aware that it can't go to some of the more questionable sites on the internet, but I feel like it plays it quite safe. And that's a shame for Disney. I think if this was a Pixar movie, they may have pushed that boundary a little bit more. Um, but because this is core Disney, they don't really do that. And it builds up to a climax as well that it makes sense, but it's not that exciting. It feels like it's meant to be more exciting than it actually is. But how this ends for the characters, um, and I won't spoil anything, but I quite like it. So it's another thing that was unexpected. I wasn't expecting the story to wrap up in quite the way that it did. Um, but it's effective. I think it's a nice way to close out these movies. I certainly don't think we need a third Ralph movie after this one. One and two are fine. Sort of the laws of diminishing returns makes me really not want a third one. But yeah, for the most part, a film that's very, very enjoyable, if a bit of a distance away from the quality that the first one set up. But that was such a good film, it was always going to be hard to do that. But this is just a worry I have in general with Disney. I don't want them to keep doing these sequels. As I say, Frozen 2, I really liked the first Frozen movie, but I wasn't like I need to see another one now. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see which other ones come up. But I'm going to give Ralph Breaks the Internet at Wreck-It Ralph 2 a 7 out of 10. Have you seen Ralph Breaks the Internet yet? If so, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Let me know your favourite Disney movie too, and what classic Disney movie you think should get a sequel. Um, there's a lot of choices there. There's a lot of movies that may have had sequels that went straight to DVD or video, whatever it was at the time. But which one would you like to see get a proper cinematic release again? It seems to be the thing they're going to do, so let's let's get on board with it. Let's play ball. I do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of them. Look out for more reviews coming soon. There'll be a review coming up on Wednesday for a movie that I don't know what it is because it's a secret screening, so look out for that. I'm excited. There's a few things that I'd like it to be. really hope it doesn't disappoint. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Joe Julian's, also my name on Stardust. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.